Starting a film project can be pretty daunting. So many phone calls to make, emails to write, favours to ask. So this is what the beginning stages of pre-production has been like for us on our latest short film. And hopefully you'll be able to learn from some of my mistakes. It all started with an email from a guy called Johan, who had written a script. I read the script, we had a couple of Skype calls, and before I knew it, I had agreed to direct this film. But I thought, well, I'm in full-time education and I'm trying to make weekly episodes for this channel, so let's wait a year until I'm finished with school. But Johan convinced me to go for it anyway, and even though I had no idea whether this would be possible, I said, okay, three months. We'll shoot in three months. That was kind of terrifying. I think mostly just the logistics. We'd need actors. How much crew would we need? Where are we gonna find locations? So I got in touch with Carl, an up and coming producer who I'd met through a different project. He was up for it and he got straight to work combing through the script to see what we'd need to make this happen. Now the three of us didn't actually live that close to each other. So we'd have a bunch of calls where I'd talk to Johan about how we could approach this creatively and then talk to Carl about what we were gonna do to pull that off practically. I've realized that I really like collaborating on these bigger projects. We'd have these calls and talk about the project and then at the end make up these to-do lists for each of the things that we'd do before the next call. And that was really helpful for me to stay on track since I really struggle with procrastination. So I talked to Carl, our producer, to work out how long it would take to set up and film each of the scenes and then we'd try and order them based on what would make most sense for the actors, but also bearing in mind which scenes need to be shot in the dark and which ones in the day. It really is a bit of a Rubik's Cube trying to find all these things where you fix one thing and then that messes up something else. So you really have to try all these different combinations until you find something that works. But it is honestly hugely important because you can't do anything until you've got down a date. Now the producer also handled all of the budgeting, but we'll get to that in a separate episode. On the creative side, it was really helpful for me to try and find the core of the story. And I feel like with two wrongs, it's a story about revenge. And so that dictated a lot of the decisions that we made. For example, I wanted it to be quite snappy, one thing happening after another, because I feel like when it comes to revenge, if you were to stop and take a take note and think about what you're doing, you probably wouldn't go through with the revenge. As far as the tone and the style goes, one of the first things that me and Johan had talked about was how those orange sodium vapor streetlights were really important to the aesthetic. They just felt right. And then I built on that idea to go from orange light at the start of the scene to a much cooler, almost moonlit kind of look for the end of the scene, as it goes from hot rage to cold-blooded killing. So those images were some of the first on the mood board, which is basically just a little montage of any kind of screenshots from movies, photos about the locations, anything that kind of helps to communicate that vision in your mind from when you're reading the script and down to something that's on paper so it's consolidated and so you can show it to the DP and the costume designer. Now, after talking to Johan, I found that we were kind of on the same page. A lot of the things that I definitely didn't want to do, he was agreeing on them. And then he also was definitely bringing a lot of good ideas to the project. So I wanted to include him in the process rather than just taking the script and running off with it. So we basically talked about what we thought the purpose of each scene was, and then went through each line of dialogue, trying to see whether any changes were needed. For example, after reading the first version of the script, I felt like the overall message of the film needed to be a bit more subtle, a bit more kind of woven in. But of course, the big limiting factors for everyone are time and money. So there were some things that we had to change because we just couldn't do it. Like for instance, at one point we thought we were gonna be able to get access to a hospital, but then when that didn't pan out, we really had to adapt to that. In the meantime, Carl had hired Rebecca, a casting director, and after I had given her a rough description of what each character could look like, she pretty much did everything else for us. So when I arrived in Manchester, I didn't even know how many people were going to be auditioning, but I went straight to the room that Carl had booked for us, and Rebecca had done a great job at finding a whole bunch of actors, I think it was about 25 people who auditioned, and they were all scheduled throughout the day in their 10 minute slots. I felt like the best actors showed that they had range, they could respond to feedback while still giving convincing performances, not only in their face expressions and dialogue delivery, but also in their body language. Because some of the actors were great above the neck, 
but just seemed really uncomfortable, like they didn't know how to stand. You know, it was really worthwhile just to spend an entire day focusing on character and performance. Being able to work with so many different actors, I felt like I knew a lot better what I was going to be doing on the shoot. Since I wasn't going to be back in Manchester until the shoot itself, I decided to make the most of it and do some location scouting the very next day. Johan lived around there, so he'd already sent me some pictures of what looked like some pretty decent locations. So we walked around and found a pretty nice looking cafe. And Carl had actually managed to get us permission to film there. And although I liked the look of it and it would have worked for the kind of geometry of the scene, it didn't really fit with the film. We needed a takeaway joint, something like that, because this short really is a product of its location. It, the story just wouldn't take place in a small little village full of rich people. So out scouting, I wasn't looking for green fields and fancy restaurants. It was more like this sort of thing from the mood boards that was more aesthetically appropriate, but also fit in more with the kind of culture around gangs and how it is usually people who are kind of on the edges of society, people who have nowhere else to go. So I felt like a good place to start was around the back of buildings. We found one place that was a really good fit for our second scene, both in terms of the aesthetics, but also about the kind of shape of where everything is and how the scene could take place. But then I decided to just take a look around the back of the building just to see if there's anything there. And we stumbled across what I'm pretty sure was the most rundown, grimy looking place in the entire area. Because that was really the idea. We were in a very nice part of Manchester, but then we would just find these little pockets of decay and film there. Most of the locations we picked were actually within walking distance of each other, which was gonna make it really easy when it came to filming. But the one problem with that was it meant they were all right next to the train track and on the streets where we'd have problems with sound. But how bad could it be? And so I left Manchester after the auditions and location scouting, feeling much better about the project, happy with what we'd accomplished, and with a clearer idea about how to direct each character from the casting. And I was really glad to be able to walk through each scene in the actual locations, which I knew would be really helpful for the storyboarding. So it was all beginning to take shape. Already the film was pretty different to what we started with, and we still had two months before the shoot. I had no idea what was coming up, but I had a feeling it was only going to be even more intense. But one thing is definitely for sure. I knew it would have been a big mistake to wait a full year before getting started on this project. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.